Hi guys, let's continue today's lesson with the actual concept of complex numbers. In this video, we will be learning about something brand new to you, uh, which is imaginary numbers. Imaginary numbers are what complex numbers are. So complex numbers are numbers that have an imaginary number in it. Imaginary numbers do not exist in the real world. And imaginary numbers are the whole reason why in Algebra 1 class, and even in this class, we wrote things like all real numbers. Um, we had to write all real numbers because there is such a thing as imaginary numbers. So the definition of an imaginary number is the square root of negative one. In the past, whenever you were given the square root of a negative number, you just kind of stopped and your teacher either told you to write no solution, which is not completely accurate, or your teacher wrote you to write no real solutions. So when you have the square root of a negative, it is true that there are no real solutions uh, because it's an imaginary solution. Now you cannot take the square root of a negative number in the real world because when you're looking for square roots, you're looking for a pair of numbers that are exactly the same. But to get a negative answer, you would need one positive number and one negative number. And those are not exactly the same. So that's why we can't take the square root of negatives. And so somebody invented the letter I for imaginary. It's a lowercase, it's kind of cursive too. You put like a little tail at the end of it. Uh, letter I, and that means I'm taking the square root of a negative number. Another important thing that you'll need to remember for this chapter and future chapters is that when you square the letter I, you get the number negative one. Imaginary numbers are the only numbers that when you square them will give you a negative answer. Every other number, when you square it, positive or negative, uh, when you square it, it's always a positive number. So this can get us a negative number when we square it. Imaginary numbers exist to solve a problem like this. So x squared equals negative 4. Uh, normally, we would square root both sides, and then we would stop here and say, oh, can't do it. I don't know the square root of a negative. Um, and we would just kind of stop doing the problem. But now that we know that it's imaginary numbers exist, we could actually solve this question and we would give ourselves an imaginary answer. For today, we're going to go over the most basic type of imaginary problems, uh, which again is just the square rooting of a negative number. So here's my first example. I'm going to walk you through this one really slowly so you understand where the math comes from. And then after this, I'll just show you a little shortcut about what you do when you square root a negative. So in this problem, technically, uh, the square root of negative five can be rewritten as the square root of negative one uh, times five, right? Five, negative five can be rewritten as negative one times positive five. And then we can split this if we want to into the square root of negative one and the square root of five. You can do that anytime you have a multiplication problem. And we just learned on the previous slide that the square root of negative 1 is actually the letter i. So I can replace it or substitute it with the letter i. And that's it. Okay. So technically what we're doing is we're taking our negative number, we're splitting it into the number times negative 1, and then the negative 1 square root turns into the letter i. That's technically what we're doing. Uh, you do always want to put the I in front of the radical. It's just like in our previous video, whenever anything like escaped out of the radical, it went in front. So make sure that you're putting it in front of the radical. Uh, if you put it behind the radical, it kind of looks like it's underneath the square root with the number five, and that can get really confusing. So just always make sure to write it right in front. If you have other stuff out in front, you usually will write that stuff first. So like you would write number then you would write your I with a little tail at the end so that we can tell it's a letter I. And then you would write your square root and then, you know, whatever got left inside stays inside. So number I rad, that's kind of the order that we write things in. If one part is missing, just still keep it in that same order. So like it could be number I, it could be I rad, 
It could be number I rad. It could be number rad without the letter I, right? This is just the generic order that we write things in. Okay. Now, um, this again is technically how we do it, but like, we're not going to write that many steps. So in reality, what you're going to do uh, is just anytime you see a negative underneath the square root symbol, your very first step, first thing you're going to do is you're going to pop that negative out and change it into a letter I. So in this problem, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the negative, it's going to hop outside and it's going to turn into the letter I, the number I. It's a number, it's not a variable. And then just proceed as per usual. So the square root of 25 is five. And if we look at our order up here, uh, I'm actually gonna write the five first. So five I would be my final answer. Okay, so again, number on the inside, you're gonna have a letter I in your answer. Really quickly, let's look back at the examples from the first video. So I'm changed them a little bit. So in this first example, I made it a square root of negative 605. And that would change our answer by putting an I as part of the answer. So instead of 11 rad 5, it's 11 I rad 5 because of the negative inside the square root. Now the negative does have to be inside the square root to turn into a letter I. If the negative is on the outside of the square root, that just means you're going to negative answer. So if I put a negative out here, and again, this is example two from our first video. If I put a negative out here, that just means my answer is negative 2 rad 35. So inside turns into an I. Outside just means your answer is negative. This concludes our second video for today, and you should now be able to do your homework.